Wednesday, September the 11th, Finance Committee meeting to order at 8.20 p.m. Myself, Brian McGinnis, the chair, Nicole Shimoni, and Brian Travis. Uh, are there any uh, announcements? Seeing none, let's move to item three. Comments, suggestions, petitions by residents and attendants regarding items not on the agenda. Seeing none, let's move to item four. The director's report on monthly financials. Barb Leonti. Good evening. Um, if we could start with page two, please. So looking at the August 31st cash position report, we started the month with 23,967,235 in cash. We booked 5,134,879 in receipts. We spent 4,095,815. This left us with an ending cash balance across all funds of 25,6299. Um, looking at um, the financial summary highlights pages three through seven. Um, I'll start with the general fund first. Um, the general fund does consist of the admin, recreation, IT, public works, and housing departments. The general fund for the month of August booked 1,560,803 in revenue. This is offset by 1,547,909 in expense, and this leaves us with a $12,894 net income for the month. Year to date, we have 17370000 in revenue booked. This is offset by 15,133,463 in expense, and we have booked a year to date net income of 1,866,907. And just for your reference, I'm going through pages three to five. I'm working on the general fund first. So looking at the revenues year to date, um, EIT continues to perform very well. Um, if I were ending the year at this point in time, I would say that um, we're going to project to be better than budget. Um, interest income is also doing very well. We had an $80,000 budget year to date. We've booked $175,000 in the general fund and interest income. I'm happy to report that deed transfer is finally um, uh, meeting more of what I would expect within the budget. So that makes me um, relatively confident that we will do well in this line item um, for year end. We are expected to receive our state aid sometime either this week or early next week, which will go towards paying down the uh, 2024 MMO for both the police pension and the non uniform plans. And um, one other note to make on revenues rental permits um, we're a little behind on deposits. So we do expect um, the majority of those to be picked up in um, either by the end of September or early October. Looking on the expense side, um, line items that have been previously reported, um, we do st still have line items that are overspent, but overall general fund revenues are generating enough to cover um, those line items that are, are overspent. Um, right now we're in the obviously in the month of September, so looking forward to um, year end. I see the last three months of the year as a balancing act. Um, my goal is to end the year in general fund cash of $2.5 million, the majority of that being in the Plaget Fund with high interest yield earnings. Um, we, we will not be um, asking for any kind of TAN note in 2025, nor will we be asking to borrow from the Capital Operating Reserve. Um, I do feel that the $2.5 million will be enough to cover us for the first three months in 2025. Um, some big things to end the year. We do have a big debt service payment coming on November 15th that covers the 2016 bond issuance. Um, we are keeping on top of our AR so that we have enough cash coming through at year end and just making sure that, you know, we're ending the year on a strong note and in a positive position and that, um, you know, too many of these line items aren't being overspent and we're, you know, continually meeting with department heads to meet expectations. Moving over to page six of the summary, the special revenue funds, fire, liquid fuels and stream protection. The fire fund, we do have one final invoice for the 2023 capital um, project for the, the chief's vehicles. 
that is expected to be paid in September. Liquid fuels, um, again, the major expense on that fund is the paving project, which I expect to be completed by year end, but we will need some cash in the fund for any winter maintenance needs um, since it is an annual allocation and we don't get our funding until April of next year. And stream protection um, projects are expected to wrap up by year end. Moving over to the enterprise fund, the sewer on page seven, for the month of August, we booked $362,802 in revenue. This is offset by $555,401 in expense. This leaves us with a net loss for the month of 192,599. Year to date, revenue 4,846,493. This is offset by 3,360,599 in expense. And we have a year to date net income of 1,485,894. Um, again, in the sewer fund, revenues are tracking very well, as, as well as expenses, and the revenues are generating enough to cover line item overages. The parking fund, page eight, for the month of August, we booked 390,662 in revenue. This is offset by 336,730 in expense, which leaves us with a net income of $53,932 for the month. And year to date, uh, revenues booked are 3,651,130. This is offset by 2,885,322 in expense. And this leaves us with a year to date net income of $765,807. Again, no issues in the parking fund. Um, revenues are generating enough to cover any line item overages. Are there any questions? I did have uh, one question. So you mentioned uh, roughly 174,000 in income from interest. Yes. Uh, and I know, and Mr. Metric, the we're gonna have probably securities that are gonna be coming due due to maturity. Uh, have we thought about what plan we have for investing those securities once they mature? Um, just if I may answer that quickly, that is um, an operational goal that I have for 2025 um, to take a look, better look at some of those things and see if there's any opportunities where we can um, do better there. So, Well, and the reason why I bring that up, with the, the pending rate cut, we might want to look at Six month CDs that may or may have higher yields. Uh, again, that that once they come due, they could become liquid, and then maybe staggering some of the other business or other uh, uh, securities and maybe some type of treasury bills or short term notes that could gain yield as well. Uh, just a whole host of options. Uh, I think that could draw an extra yield. Also, leaving it in. The, the current money market that we have too. But just something to consider again when those securities mature. Yes. Are there any other questions? Public? We okay to go on to the budget? Yes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Jeff, can you pull that up for we'll me, move please? To the uh, 2025 budget. Um, if we could start on page two. Um, so before you, you have a preliminary budget for the administration department. Um, admin we generally consider being uh, made up of. Uh, the borough manager's office, which is the borough manager, the HR director, data manager. Executive assistant and the sustainability director, as well as the finance department, which is the finance director, staff accountant, and accounts receivable specialist. For 2025, I'm sorry, Jeff, could you go to page two? Thank you. Um, for 2025, we are looking to um, have a staff count of eight. In the 2024 budget, we did have a um, an administrative assistant position. Um, that position will not be filled this year, and we are not looking for that request for 2025. So we are going to have um, a count of eight positions 
in the admin department. Um, pages three, four, and five and six of the, the presentation just give a general overview of what each position does um, within the department. So if we could move over to page seven, please. So these are the revenue assumptions that I started um, the, the admin budget with. Um, again, the admin budget accounts for all major revenues of the general fund that we do not allocate um, across departments. So our big revenues are our taxes, our EIT, state aid, transfers, grants, and our ARP allocation. So my base assumption, I started with our two big revenues, which are EIT and real estate taxes. And when I looked at EIT, um, I took a, um, a look at the prior year collections, what we actually received in 2023, what was booked in our trial balance. I um, looked at EIT collections through August 31st, and I assumed what that projection would be through the end of the year. And then I also made a, an, an across the board assumption that employees that either work or live in the borough would receive a cost of living adjustment from their employers of about 3.5% for 2025. So with all of those assumptions in place, um, we are looking to project um, earned income will increase by about $475,000 for next year. Um, again, this is very preliminary at this point in time. Um, I know Sean and I will meet to go over this, and this is probably a big jump because I tried, I tend to be very conservative and I know that drives him nuts. So this is a big jump, um, you know, on our part, but again, at this point, very preliminary. Real estate taxes, um, I calculated that at the current millage rate of 8.09. I um, used the assessed property value, which was certified by the county of 773,000. 979,154. I took into consideration a 1.97% um, early discount um, people paying ahead of time. And this, I come up with a real estate tax number of 6,138,140, which is slightly above where we were at for 2024 of about $17,000. Um, I did decrease the D transfer by $45,000, again, just based on trends through 2024 and assuming that mortgage rates would, um, you know, land about where they are now. I did um, increase the MMO by 2%, just based on the salaries that we reported on the March 31st AG, AG385. And we are moving our solar and EV revenues um, from the general fund into the parking fund. So if you move over to page eight, again, very preliminary, um, we are projecting revenues of 19,103,305, which is a $521,000 increase or 3%. Um, one line item that I do not have any um, numbers in is for the, the PA municipal health medical insurance refund. Um, I know this was, a line item that we had talked about last year where we tr were trying to smooth that number over because it, it bumps around so much and it becomes hard to budget for. So the thought being that um, if we budgeted $250,000 each year, and if we don't make that line item by July or August of the following year, the borough manager would come before council and either ask to uh, for a transfer from the capital operating reserve fund, or if we made more in that year, we would transfer that money back. Um, I, I, that is a, a an agenda item later in this agenda. So that that is a number to be determined. Moving over to page nine, the expense assumptions. Um, I started with two major assumptions in the admin um, budget. Again, there being no staffing changes, and I did assume across the board a 7% increase for medical workers comp and general insurance. Um, major increases that we have in the line expense items, um, the human resources line item is, is increasing by $17,000 for 2025. Um, we are looking to um, implement a wellness program for our employees. Our software costs are going up by about $20,000. This is for SmartGov, OpenGov, and Muni billing costs. 
we have added a line item for the um, qualifying volunteer tax credit of $12,000 for EMS and firefighter professionals. Um, we netted that against the revenue in the 2024 budget, but I want to have a line item in 2025 for this. And we are also um, expecting to increase our collection fees for delinquent notices sent to Portnoff for real estate taxes by $8,000. Uh, moving over to page 10, uh, the salary expenses, we're projecting a 3% increase um, across the board for the, these line items. Uh, moving over to page 11 and 12, I couldn't get it all on one slide, but this is the operating expenses. I am showing this a little differently this year. Um, we have separated operating expenses. Um, we've separated them out against capital and transfers, so they're not all commingled. Um, I think it gives a bit better picture of what, how things are going up or down. So looking at um, the operating expenses, we um, one of the big changes that we made here is we are moving the bid allocation of $85,000. We're moving that from the general fund into the parking fund. Um, we are also moving our EV charging expense into the parking fund. Um, and again, another line item on this agenda is the 2025 MMO, but you will see that the non-union uh, portion is decreasing for um, 2025. So that's why at this point in time, we have a 3% reduction in operating expenses. Moving over to page 13, um, the capital expense. I have um, the ARPA, the $262,000 that we reviewed a few months ago that needs to be allocated by year end and spent by 2026. And then you'll finally see um, our transfers. Uh, we have our all of the transfers that support the, the general fund. Um, we have a transfer into the non-uniform pension fund, capital fire and stream protection. I know that was a lot of information, but if anyone has any questions. Sure. I have a comment and a question. Uh, the comment is, I'd love to see one more column in here. Okay. And that would be your 2024 forecast. Okay. Um, Cause you know, you're kind of going off the budget numbers from what I see, but I, how are we really trending to actuals versus cause that may influence where we're thinking the sure. money could go. So that, that would be great. Um, the other question I have, I get the EV charging expense moved to parking, but I'm a little confused by why we would move the bid all to parking versus the admin because it, yeah. That's my question. Why did we do that? Yeah, it's more of a thought uh, as to how much coordination we're doing with the downtown Westchester and the and the business improvement district authority in coordination with parking. It feels like a function that we spend a lot of time talking with the parking director about managing the downtown and it seemed like it was a Operational goal I wanted to set for the parking director to leverage her skill set to become more involved in local economic development for downtown. And it just, I think it made sense. So I don't have more, more to say than that. Okay. Cause, cause my, my thought is too, and I, I know we're all kind of meeting with John as he's creating his budget and things like that. He's asked to at least. I think he's asked, he's asked to meet with everybody. So you should, you should get on that meeting now. If, yeah. But point B, uh, my thought is too, though, if, if we're, I've said to him, you know, he's doing a great job with events. He's doing a great job with bringing, bringing uh, excitement to the borough. And then we've got, and I know you guys are over here. You're going to be asking us for money. There's somebody else that wants that, that want, you know, we're, we're having all these conversations about event fees. And my thought is, you know, again, we, we want to get to a point where we set these fees and, and people pay them and they don't always ask us for, for money for them. <laughs> so, um, for, for a refund, right? Like that's where we're headed. Right. And so I said to John, I'm like, listen, if you're having these events and people need support, like your budget should be the one that supports them, not the borough, right? Like that should be your piece. So I don't necessarily see all the money that we're paying to him to be related to parking, right? And I hope that it doesn't get taken that way because 
because I want him to use that money for not just parking. And so that's where I feel like it's kind of a, it's a weird space to put it. I mean, I hear you want Ramsey to kind of help a little bit because there's a parking component, but I feel like there's a holistic component that's more than just parking. Just my thought, and and I, I have a feeling he's going to ask for more than eighty five thousand this year. I mean, I'm kind of convinced in that. We keep talking about event fees, and it seems like it's public safe, it's safety, it's public works, it's the police, and it's parking, and it's probably something else that I'm forgetting. But I, I think we've talked a couple times about having a budget line item for all event fees. And perhaps we could, you know, there could be a, uh, we could break that out, but um, I hear what you're saying. I tend to agree now. At first, I, I was kind of convinced that it made sense because a lot of it's associated with parking. Um, but I think we might lose sight of the, the pieces and parts if we don't have it all together. So I, I kind of agree with you, um, Ms. Shmui. I'm in agreement as well. Uh, Barb. Regarding the 262,000 that's remaining from the recovery act. Have we decided how we're going to allocate that for next year or. So, my understanding is that it will be going towards the gay street project. That would be our suggestion. Or that's our ask to use it there. Okay. I'm fine with that. Uh, any, do you have any further? Uh, one thing I'd like to touch on, I didn't touch on my operational goals. Um, Jeff, if you could go to the last page. Um, so we would like to uh, continue working on automating our vendor payment processing by utilizing ACH and credit card. Um, obviously, obviously, everyone knows the, the mail system is um, slow. It's and um, we've ha we have had some issues where um, checks aren't getting to vendors in time. Um, we've been getting a lot of complaints. So, as a department, we are working, um, you know, to pay a majority of our bills by ACH as much as we can, and credit card processing just to, um, you know, update the times a little bit. So. Um, I would like to bring back the procurement card program. We had this in place a few years ago, but. There was some issues with it, but I feel that um, myself as the director, as well as my 2 staff that are very good. Um, we can do a much better job where, um, you know, we're getting receipts on time. Things are getting booked timely. I would like to see the procurement card rolled out to department heads only where they have um, a, a borough credit card where they can make normal purchases um, within a certified parameter. They would have to sign off on a policy and then there would be requirements where if we don't get our receipts in a timely manner and if there's any other issues, you know, there could be preventive steps moving forward from that. But 1 um, benefit of this program is that, you know, all the spending that is put on the card, we do get a refund back and that's always a nice little bonus. And um, the thought would be that. You know, whatever bonus we got back, we could put that into the wellness program that could go back and benefit the employees. Um, 2 other things um, we're going to work on is improving our sewer um, accounts, a our ARs, making sure that we have enough money coming into that fund um, based on the discussion last night. There's a lot of capital projects coming down the road and we want to make sure that, you know, there's there's um, sufficient. Cash to pay for these projects coming along and then, like we had talked about enhancing cash management, looking at more ways to earn um, better rates. You know, where can we move some money short term? Those types of things. So. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Is there any comments on the day? Is any public comment? Thank you very much. Barb. appreciate it. Uh, let's move to old business and discuss special events fee calculation. Uh, this is something that we had discussed last month, but we appears we needed some further clarification on that. And Barb, you're up again. Can you um, pull up that? Yeah, the calculation. So none of the assumptions have been changed since last month, but I did um, want to share where kind of, you know, um, this calculation came from. Um, so I have this before you and some of the base assumptions that we started with were what, when, when does this event 
or when does this fee become relevant? And as a group, we um, decided that the fee applies when um, any event requires the closure of either high, gay, or market streets. This um, calculation is to be used for special events. And then the next thing I thought of, well, is there a minimum staffing for these events? Because it seems like, you know, a lot of the complaints are coming from, um, you know, the different hours that are being required and not all of them seem to be the same. And after talking with the um, police department, there is not an, a minimum number of staffing. Um, it is all determined by um, what the police think the needs are for each event. Um, we would still recommend keeping the 50% reduction on parking revenue. That is not going to change. And um, my recommendation, what I would like to see, and I think it makes sense, is to charge an across the board fee for all of the events of um, $10 instead of there being different charges for different things, because I think some of that gets lost in translation. Um, and again, um, I know that there was questions on, you know, why the rate was as high as it is or what is accounted for that. And I think it um, is smart business uh, acumen to account for your overhead. So I understand that, you know, we're paying officers and public works employees an hourly rate, but these events go above and beyond the normal scope of the government services. And the majority of times they're paid at a premium overtime rate. Over time in within the police department, they have a $350,000 budget for 2025, as well as an $80,000 line item for public works. That over time is calculated into pension costs, which become legacy costs for um, defined benefit employees within the public works, as well as police officers. And, um, I think as an organization, if we're going to ask our taxpayers um, for any tax increases, we should be cognizant of those things. So that was my thinking behind that. So in looking at this calculation, um, I took 2023 W-2 salary information. Um, one other thing I did not mention is while there is no minimum number of employees that are needed per event, we have seen across the board that for both police and um, public works, there is a, a line staff and a supervisor. So that's why you see these four um, components here of the, the sergeants, which would be the supervisor for the police department, the police officers, the line staff, the public works supervisor, and a public works employee. So I took their 2023 W-2s and then all of the um, overhead for health insurance, FICA. Jeff, if you could just scroll a little bit more. So they can see the rest. It, can you go to the right? Did it cut off? Is it on another page? So after calculating all of that, we come up with a total salary and benefits. I then took that number and divided that by 2080 to, to come up with an hourly rate with benefits, which you'll see in that uh, column before the highlighted. And then we took the overtime rate since most of these um, events are paid out at an overtime rate. And we took a blend of the two rates. So we took a blend of the supervisor and the line staff. So in the blue, you'll see that the average of those two numbers for the police department, I believe is 155. We settled on 150, so it was a nice round number. And then for public works, I believe it was an average of $93 and we settled on a rate of $90. So that was kind of the assumptions that were put into this and how we came up with the numbers. Thank you. Any uh, questions on the dais? Yes. So you um, mentioned that this is only for um, events on gay, high, and market. What about all the other events that everyone is having all over where we charge these fees? I, I'm, I'm a little like, what happens there? We, we would still charge for police services for these um, um, at these rates. So we probably shouldn't say that it's only for gay high and market then it's for any events in the borough yes. basically right okay so we should probably take that assumption out um 
parking. Uh, I believe it stayed the same, the $10. That, I guess that was the other thing from the last meeting. Did you talk to Ramsey and she was good with the 10 bucks? Yes. And, and all we, of that? We, okay. have, we cleared up that. Aligned on that? Yes. Okay. Just one question about the insurance. Uh, I'm trying to wrap my head around why that would be part of the calculation. It seems like that would be a fixed cost regardless of overtime. So my assumption was I was trying to capture um, all salary expense relating to these employees. And that's why I put in the workers comp and um, unemployment. It was just trying to capture everything um, associated with what we pay employees. That was that was just my base assumption, trying to count to cover, you know, a, a total utilization utilization um, for and employees. Too, like the workers, if you're looking at the workers comp column, what does that work out to be about 2%? And if you consider that Barb rounded down. I was looking at the health insurance. You're looking at the health insurance. Sorry. Yeah. Well, it's on page one. Again, that's it's my way of capturing. I mean, that would be the um, one thing that I that, that I and you know might not go into. Yeah, and we can certainly um, take any of that out. But my process going into this was trying to capture everything, and that's what I did here. I captured it. I tried to capture. Every cost that is associated, not only with salary, but um, any benefits that are paid to employees. And it looks like the health care there might be about 15%. I would remove that from the calculation. That would be my suggestion. I don't know if my colleagues here have any comments about that. I, I think that it very, like, I get the. The going into the if we have to pay extra for for pension and right that that's part of what you you were calculating because when they get overtime that that all goes into additional money we have to pay out I, I kind of get that piece but if if health benefits are health benefits for the year no matter what I I agree I'd rather take it out so that nobody can question it and so that when they come and say we want a discount why are you charging me health benefits we're not charging them health benefits we're charging them what it costs us and therefore we don't want we we can't afford let me put it that way we can't afford to continue to give discounts because we're only just passing through costs so if if it makes it clearer and cleaner then I would I could get behind that okay. removing that Thank you. Um, you figured everything out, which I understand. But then after you figured out all the costs, you round it down. So you're not including all the costs instead of rounding up. Is that what you said? Why would you round down so we not were... up when typically you round up? So if you look at it, it's $155. Kind of our thought process was to make it a nice even number. Why or why not keep it at the cost? Why would you round down and not include all the cost? I mean, why are we rounding down? I think the thought process was that, um, you know, people were up in arms over it anyway. So in order to kind of uh, try to be a compromise to everyone, I rounded down and that was the consensus. So, so I think it's a good point. Like if we're taking out the healthcare piece, that's like part of that questionable ask then maybe we don't need to round because no one will question it. It'll just be, this is what it costs us. So maybe in the, the revision that you're, okay. that you're looking at, just don't round because you don't have to, because we're taking that piece out. Yep. I'm fine with that. I think that's a good idea. The costs are the costs. Healthcare is expensive. We all know that. Single person costs over 500 miles. The costs are expensive. Uh, uh, you know, but it's not the healthcare. I think to Brian's point is the healthcare is not an. It doesn't go up incrementally. Right. It, it doesn't. Yeah. The pension goes up. Yes. 
Right. I, I thought it was just in there that it didn't go up one over time. It was just in there. So, although it certainly leaves them to a higher risk of exposure to things happening, um, but at, at events um, with people, um, I, I, I just didn't understand why it was being rounded down. Do our premiums I go mean, up people, over time? I mean, people, you know, events are expensive to have, period. And, you know, and, and then you get hit with everyone wanting discounts, so. And this is why we shouldn't do discounts. We should charge what we need to charge. And, and that's, again, that's what we're trying to get to. So I, I think, yeah. I, I think that this is a very, very good start to being fully transparent when people want to know what exactly they're going to be paying for an event. And that's what we need to do. And I, I, I appreciate the work that you've done on this. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, and well, are there any public comment? Any further questions about uh, the events calculation? Okay. So I. I do so she if Barb makes those changes, are we okay to um, present this and recommend it next week, or do we need another round? Well, it, it's currently underneath old business, Sean. And do we do we want to? I mean, I don't see it as here as a motion, but do we want to move that to? I think what I heard the committee saying it was that uh, it would be in favor of. Um, the method that's been presented tonight to calculate it with the following amendments, removing the health insurance and workers' comp insurance from the calculation, which would result in a roughly 19 to 20% reduction in the actual hourly, blended hourly rate. So instead of rounding that 155 to 150, we're going to use that actual number there when it comes out the other side of the algorithm. And we might end up with a number when we do that work of 124 and 76. That's what I did some quick math on my here when I was thinking about it. So we could move that forward with those changes to council to approve a new fee structure if the committee wants to make that recommendation. Yeah, the the other change I would um, want to put in there is to to take out the assumption that this is only for gay high and market street events. So make sure that. So, um, the porch fest was, um, uh, talked about at last month's agenda. Um, I sent around some information on, um, that as well as an email attachment for the chili cook off. So do you want to start with porch fest 1st? Let's, uh, go for it. Hi, everyone. I'm Renee Perna. Um, Molly Hanford was here last month. She's not available right now. Um, so I wanted to discuss uh, some kind of a lower amount for our bill that we have for the past um, por porch fest. 2002, this, is our th this was our third year in 2024 for porch fest. The first year we got our bill, we paid it, everything's fine. Second year, same thing, same footprint. We paid our bill, everything's fine. The third year, which was this year, we got the bill and we changed the footprint three blocks. We had three extra blocks. And the price of the porch fest was almost doubled by the police department and the public works fees. Um, with the new fees that we're looking at, that were attached to the email that we had today, um, we're actually paying $50 extra. So it didn't really help us. So we're trying to see if we could get some kind of lower amount due to that for that invoice that we got this year. 
we reached, we got the invoice in June after Porch Fest was May 21st. Um, we reached out to Keith, who is the um, park and recs person that we interacted with at the borough, asked him what we do if we wanna talk about getting something done for the bill. He let us know to reach out and to get onto the agenda for this meeting. We, we were not on the agenda last month, but we spoke when we say this, anybody should come up and speak. Um, and then that was us doing that last month and we had you know, where we are now. We talked and discussed over discussing the amount that we could, that you guys were gonna do to change what's going on on your side. So we wanna see if there's anything that we can do to get some money off of what was billed to us. My, okay, so my understanding is that you were invoiced basically what you were um, estimated, right? Uh, we were sent your estimate, it, it was basically spot on. So um, my first question is why didn't you ask when you got the estimate, like months before the event? Um, my second question is I still don't have a clear understanding of the, the billing and the growth of the event. You said three blocks. How many blocks was it before? How many blocks is it after? I don't know. Okay. The first year, yeah, you said you paid it, but my understanding is also that you got a nice, have, uh, a nice lift from the mayor's office that she, she kind of like a Kickstarter, if you will. So that shouldn't have been expected in the second or third year. That was a Kickstarter. Was not. It, it wasn't expected. So, yeah. so yeah. So the fact that the, the amounts, you know, you can't really consider 2022 because that was your right, question. and it's not so being or 23 and 24. I'd love to see that that comparison and understand that better before I okay make a decision. And that's kind of what I asked your your partner in crime last. Yeah, uh, last it was month. eight blocks last time, or 2023 and 2024 was 11 that were closed. And and how many um, acts and how long did it go like throughout the day? Like what hours? It was the porch fest start from 12 o'clock and it went on till six. Um, let me see. I don't in 2023 know. or 2022. Both years. It was the same time frame. Um, the acts doubled. I don't know the exact numbers right now, but I could get that to you. If I, have, I don't have it. I could, I don't have it. It definitely doubled at least. And Renee, yes. did they um, initially, did the police and the parks and rec base that upon the amount of people that they were going to, that were estimated to attend Porch Fest? Uh, because I believe in 2023, there was, I, I, I'm not sure what it was. Yeah, they never gave us an actual number, but it was more in 2023 than 2024. More people attended. Right. And when 2024, it, we, we had rain, rain yeah. right? A lot of rain in the morning. And I remember I was, I was there. I think it's a great event anyway, but I, I would like to know if that was potentially included based upon estimates and their assumptions that they were going to change due to the increase. Well, on the estimate, it just tells us that it was for the amount, the location, the amount of streets that we had closed. That was the basis. What I, my my personal opinion is a I don't have enough information and b I don't like to set the precedent of doing this after the fact. I wish you would have come to us previously when you got the original estimate. Again, um, last month we were told that the cost was higher than the estimate and things like that. And we were like, oh no, you know. And we thought, oh maybe, but actually at the end of the day, the, the true cost was actually slightly lower, a couple hundred bucks. I mean insignificant well, the, than the, the estimate, right? Good fellowship was not added to their estimate. So that was a thousand dollars difference than what the amount that we paid, because we paid another thousand dollars. So to, to good fellowship. Right. Yes, not to the borough. Okay. So that was right. like a but that was but included, I'm saying last maybe time. you should go to good fellowship, I guess. I don't know. I, I, I at the end of the day, my philosophy here is though again, um this is after the fact. And I wish you right. could maybe come sooner. And in our new processing, the answer will definitely, you know, be no. But um, I, I just I can't support these after the fact because I feel like this again sets a precedent, and I don't 
I don't want to set that precedent for the borough. We need the money. We need to support right. the, totally the banks, understood. our costs. And, and it does seem like there was significant increase in the number of bands and in the area that was covered. So both of those and, and the attendance we don't know about, but all of these factors kind of create an increase in costs and need for the, the support. Okay. So we brought up last time that the Clydesdales got a discount from what they were charged and what they actually paid. And so I was, you know, trying to using that as a precedent already came to you with this request. Yeah, we're not going to do that anymore. And the Clydesdales probably asked, and that was a true borough event. And there was a lot of different things about the Clydesdale. So, sure. um, you know, I'd have to go into the nuances, but again, it wasn't this after the fact, the way it's been here with this months later. Right. Okay. I understand that it was after the fact, but I guess I just didn't know when else we should come. Like we came when, when you get knew. the estimate. When we got the estimate. Okay. So we got the bill. We came because that's what we thought we should do. So, I mean, now we know that, but it's all after the fact of us having information. So we did what we thought we could do. And so I, I mean, I, I'm just kind of stuck on. We were, I mean, there was transparency in this process, right? You got the estimate, had the event, knew what the costs would be. If they were too high, we could have scaled it back. That's why the, we go through the estimate process, I think. I mean, okay. that, that makes sense to me. So there shouldn't have been any surprises up front. I, I guess logically, I, I don't understand the ask afterwards. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm struggling with it. No, it's I, I'm understanding this is, you know, we're all volunteers. I'm not, I'm not a business person for the community. You know, I'm just trying to do an event that brings money into the community and people have fun. Yeah. So when it came, when the bill came and it was that high, we asked Keith, what could we do? And he said, bring it up to the borough council. So that's what we did. Okay. The month was June. We got the bill July. We sent an email. August, we were here. So that that was, you know, the time frame of what happened. It wasn't, you know, we weren't waiting six months and not paying our bill or, you know, doing those kind of things. We just did what we thought we should do. Got it. Thank you, Renee. Unfortunately, we're, we, we can't give that request. I'm yeah. sorry. I'd love to help. No, I love cool. Porch Fest. You're a good person. You do good work. Right, thank and you. I, I want to keep Porch Fest alive. Yeah. My recommendation is. You know, and I said this before, I said this to the mayor, work on getting sponsorships early. Mm -hmm. I, I uh, reached out about submitting a check. I submitted a check the, for 2023. I didn't hear back from anyone in 2024. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you need help with that aspect, I, I'll help. I got no problem with that. It's, it's a majority in my ward. But I think moving forward with this fee structure, we have these estimates. We're going to try to make them as transparent as possible to everyone. So that they're not going to be hit with anything. Yeah, right? that's definitely helpful. So thank and, you. And and so, uh, unfortunately, we can't help you now, but I think moving forward with planning, better planning, preparation, and knowing what to expect with transparency will help um, make this a more successful event. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Let's move on to the chili cook-off. So you have a, a, an email attachment that was included in the packet. Um, this email was sent to borough council and the applicant is here. Okay, Derek Fiorenza for the record. So I just want to thank you guys for approving us. That was awesome. Um, as you know, the event's been run by the Rotary for the past 23 years. And uh, in the spring, they kind of put it out to the public. They did a bid process to take over the event. So we submitted an application and went through it. And as you know, uh, or maybe you don't know, but one of the reasons that the Rotary had to move away from it was because of the way it was being run, volunteer support and cost. And you know how important of an event this is to the community. So nobody wanted to see the cook-off go away, but we approached it with a little bit of a different vision. And I communicated this a little bit earlier, but um, what we want to do is use this event as a catalyst 
to raise awareness for hunger, hunger in our community. So we built three new pillars with the cook-off. The first pillar is we are getting high schools and colleges involved in putting teams into the event with the hope that it serves as an impetus for them to start cooking food for homeless shelters. That's number one, so getting service with the youth. Number two, we've opened up um, from Church Street down to the end of where St. Agnes is, an entire corridor for free for all the nonprofits in the community that want to come out and put up a table. So this was, um, in the past, the Rotary would raise money, but it was more of a fun event, and then they would give grant dollars to various charities. Now the charities have a chance to network and intermingle with the public. So we all know somebody affected by mental health. We all know somebody affected by physical ailments. Now we're able to connect those resources and those dots through this event, and hopefully build more long-lasting relationships and expand the event. Number three, um, the Chili Cook-Off struggled to get teams. Okay, we were not approved to do this event until August 21st, and that was due to the application coming in in May, the summer session, but we were reviewed and approved uh, graciously August 21st. That put us behind the eight ball too in recruiting teams. So last year, the Chili Cook-Off recruited and had 46 teams preparing chili for 10,000 people roughly. Um, three weeks in, we are 21 paid and about 16 more pending. We're going to get pretty close, is my point, to the number. We might not hit 45 exactly, but we're going to get very close to where they were at last year, which means that we'll have a viable event. And we did this in about six weeks. And if you don't know our organization, we're, we're not really a big organization. We spend about 130 grand a year. Um, we have two paid staff, uh, Brenda and Pam, and a board that just cares like crazy about helping people. Um, what we're also doing with this event is bringing in organizations like the Safe Harbor and Salvation Army um, and giving and the Westchester Food Cupboard and giving them a place where they're going to benefit. So all the food at the end of this event is going to be rescued and repurposed for their shelter. So again, a little bit of a different vision. So what we're asking for your consideration proactively before the event is that you would consider, um, and I know you're working through this, in no way do I want to take away from the borough, the police. The first thing I said to the sergeant, great gentleman, I said, what would make this event safe? That's the number one priority without cutting corners. And he said, if you start this event at High Street and bring it to the end of where St. Agnes is, as opposed to Matt Black Street, it's less territory for us to cover and it keeps a major artery open. I said, great, let's do that. So we approach this with that consideration. If there's anything that can be done to reduce fees or share revenue from the parking, we'd appreciate it. If you can't, we understand. All we're asking is for you to consider it. Um, additionally, we want to keep this event in Westchester for many years to come. We think it's a, an event that belongs in Westchester. We're Chester County's largest food recovery organization. We work with the food bank. We work with Phil Abundance. We work nationally, 34 states. So we're not uh, beholding to the Westchester area, but this event belongs in Westchester. And we want to build a partnership with the borough the way the Rotary did for the next 20, 30, 40 years. That's my ask for your consideration. And um, I just want to say thank you for having me tonight. Thank you, and thank you for your presentation. I'll open up any uh, comments here on the dais. Do we know what even the estimate is yet for this event? For the, fees? Uh, the estimate for what for Keith fees. sent me, like, I think it was around $16,000. That was uh, police and parks and recs, but that was a rough estimate. and. He was basing it off of the restaurant festival and last year's chili cook-off. Barb, you look, you look like you're going to say something. Go ahead, sorry. I'm just going to say, I don't have a, a copy of the calculation, but I can certainly get that and circulate that to everyone. I can get that um, tomorrow for you. Thank you. I mean, based on what we just talked about, uh, I mean, we, we, we've just had a property tax increase. We had a 0.25% municipal tax increase. That's just in the last seven years. I, I think we're trying to get to the point where we don't have to do that because we're bearing yeah. the cost of all these events. <clears throat> we would have to pass this on to taxpayers. Or parking, because you didn't raise parking. It's $10, and the Kennett Mushroom Festival was 20 for the past two days. I'm firm no on waiving 
I'm just giving you another idea, like, because Kennet just, and they had, friend, how many people were at the Kennet Festival? Yeah, but how many thousands did they get? 25,000? It's over two days, yeah. So, so that I, and, and not saying you should do what Kenneth's doing. I think Westchester's great. But just keeping that in mind, that's what they do, and that helps offset some of the expenses that they need to charge. So just other ways to think about it. I feel conflicted because I used to be on their board, so I can't really vote. <laughs> yeah. Another thing to consider, too, is um, we're coming to you proactively because we got the ball so late. And we tried to save the event for the community. So August 21st, October 6th, that's like, what, seven weeks? So I, I think, and I, I understand that point, we're going to have to see what that estimate is going to be and potentially with this new fee structure. I understand. Up, it could be less with the new fee structure. So I, I believe we should probably at least table this or yes i agree but um, i i also will till till next month and and look at this and look at the the entire uh fee structure what that's going to be in your estimate and go from there the event is october 6th when's the next month meeting it's going to be after that so is there a way you can hold a special meeting to review it Unless we have this information, sorry, go ahead. I apologize. We, unless we have this information, I mean, I can speak. get this to you tomorrow, and I can get you a rough estimate of what you know any parking reductions. I, I can, um, I can circulate that information to you tomorrow if that makes it easier to help make a decision for next week. Okay, and then maybe we want to, um, maybe we want to put this on discussion for the work session then next week after we have all that information. And and either way, no hard feelings, you know, do what you can do. We'd appreciate it. You know what we do is all pretty much volunteer work. We serve 2 million pounds of food a year. So I know you're running a great borough. Thank you for your thoughts and consideration. And if you need anything from us, you're awesome, by the way. I was listening to you go through all that. I was like, this woman is- incredible. Say that into the microphone. <laughs> I mean, on the High five for that, because you're awesome. <laughs> Thanks. All right, but thank you for your consideration. Thank you. All right, uh, you. public comment. The tickets are ten dollars. Yeah. So you want to know what one of the problems was? They didn't collect money at the gates, so people came in and ate chili, and they weren't collecting money. They weren't getting charged. So there was a massive amount. Thousands in the order of thousands from what I've understood. I wasn't there that was not collected on last year. So we're working on tightening up, making sure you're getting paid when somebody comes in. But if you're coming in and trying chili for free, then it's not helping to offset any cost. Well, you're, okay. you're good. Yeah. Yeah. And you get the, you get the bracelet and, yeah. and the people that bought in advance, we have some, but, but just, but they didn't enforce it. And we will this year, to the best of our ability. That's a nice. You should be able to cover your costs if you're charging what ten dollars a piece. Well, and remember, this is also a fundraiser too. So we're doing it to raise money so we can serve more food to the hungry and homeless in Chester County, specifically Westchester, because we help the food cover, the Salvation Army, and Safe Harbor, and we're the largest food recovery organization in Chester County. So all the food is going back into Westchester anyway, and all the restaurants that are not currently donating food, we've now shared that message with them to donate food, not just for the event, but ongoing, which goes right back to the 40 residents that are living at Safe Harbor and all the people coming through Salvation Army and that are benefiting from the cupboard. So it's a circle that just reinvests back into the community. And that's not true. So they don't take cooked meals and that's with the health department and we're gonna fight that battle too. But what, that's a completely separate issue. But you can still donate recovered food to Safe Harbor, and you can donate non-perishable food. You just can't cook food in a non-commercial kitchen without a serve safe uh, individual there. But we're going to fight that battle. Sorry. Thank you. I apologize. Thank you. And, and I apologize. Well, hopefully next Tuesday we'll take your take that. Thank you so much for your consideration. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, item C, August 2024 meeting minutes. Any objections? Thank you. Any objections on the dais? No. Public comment, seeing none, we could approve them. 
new business move to sell Ford Focus building and housing vehicle. Yeah, this this vehicle is a seven year old vehicle with 38,000 miles and it's a lemon. And uh, we're not going to put $4,000 into this transmission. So it is in budget next year. We talked about this last month when we authorized uh, the uh, Nissan Leaf. Thank you. Any comments on the dais? Public comment, seeing none, any objections? We could call the motion approved. Thank you. Uh, motion to transfer funds from the capital operating reserve to the general fund for health care refund. I didn't get the final number here until Monday, so this is not appropriate to discuss or the committee to take action on tonight. So I suggest you table it, but I just remind you and I'll, I'll do I'll talk no more than 30 seconds here. Uh, what we agreed to last year in the budget was to budget 275. Thousand dollars as an average refund coming from our health plan back to the borough's general fund as an average of that experience that we've got we experienced over the last 5 years. And we knew that going into 2024, the 2023 experience was going to fall a little bit short and the number I have today is 125 and change. So, I'd like to give some more context to this to the committee next month, but we'd be generally looking. For the committee's support to transfer 150,000 from the capital operating reserve to the general fund. So that's that's the preview. But I ask kindly that the committee table this. Thank you. Any uh, comments on the dais? Public comment. Uh, is everyone okay with tabling it until next month? Yeah. Seem no objections. We're going to table it. Item C: Motion to approve 2025 municipal. Uh, minimum municipal obligation calculation for the uniform and non-uniform pension plans. This is this is good news. Um, this is good governance. This is uh, making hard decisions to impose the uh, 0.25 um, EIT tax many years ago. This is great cash management by Barb and her team by putting extra down payments, so to speak, on future obligations. This is good management from borough council to create a pension plan committee to surface investments and a, a plan fund advisor that charges fewer fees. All of these things have created a situation where the MMO for the uh, police pension fund is beating expectations and, and not just beating it by a little. Uh, I was expecting that to decrease uh, between five and 8% year over year and we got a a nearly $400,000 increase in the MMO. So there's more of this good news to come in the future as long as we continue to act, uh, make responsible decisions, responsible management decisions. I'm really encouraged by this. This gives us relief in the general fund to do other things with dollars. No, I, I think it's a good thing. We still could save money in the pension through expense ratios. We could still do that, okay? And uh, any any further comment on the dais? I, I I just remember a few years back when it was, you know, the reverse, and so yeah, all the work that's been done to get this back into to shape is great. It's awesome. Thank you. Any public comment? Seeing none. Any objections? Motion has been approved. Uh, motion to approve the following items here. USALCO $25,540 phosphorus removal. Darlington Equipment Company $46,995. That's a Dodge truck for Taylor Run. Darlington Equipment Company $22,475. That's uh, Taylor Run, it looks like block bearings. And then watch keep $17,259.85. And looks like that's da uh, disaster recovery backup for cloud services. Uh, any uh, comments on the dais? Public comment? Any objections? Seeing none, uh, we're going to approve uh, items D, A through D. Any other business? Any other business? Seeing none. Motion to adjourn at 925 p.m.